Tonight on Children's Hospital, doctors attempt to help three-year-old Oliver to breathe on his own. Fantastic. It would be life-changing. There's pencil trouble for eight-year-old Yaya. We might end up having to lift the whole nail. And nine-year-old Ali's in A&E for the third time. I hope it's going to be the last one. So okay. Say, yeah. Opened in June 2009, Royal Manchester Children's Hospital is now the biggest hospital of its kind in Britain. Bright, light and packed with the very latest high-tech equipment, its thousand-strong team of highly trained medics use cutting-edge technology to provide world-class care to the city's children and beyond, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. The hospital has a nursing staff of 800. One of them is respiratory nurse specialist Caroline Hoynes. Part of her job is supporting families at home as well as in hospital. Today she's visiting a patient she's known since birth. Oliver's a really special little boy. He's uh, quite unique. There's no one quite like him on my caseload. Um, he's from a really nice family as well. He's got lots of problems and what's ever thrown at them really, they just kind of take and pick themselves up and dust themselves off and start again. Yeah, I'm fine, thank Call you. Not bad. Big. Was it the big whale that we saw at the museum? Big frog. <laughs> <laughs> Three-year-old Oliver was born with a rare form of dwarfism and severe breathing problems. Wow. Remote-controlled dinosaur, Carolyn says. Would but most of his life is relied on a breathing tube called a tracheostomy, fitted directly into his windpipe. It means he can't speak. Me and you. So we need to try Let's and go. Find you want to get a big one? And where are we going to get one from? A remote control one. Is everything have to be remote control these days? Off. Yeah. 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 Give me five. Yay! Oliver's tracheostomy needs constant monitoring and cleaning every day. A job Mum Vicky has taken on herself with the support of nurses like Carolyn. You lift your head okay. right up to the sky Look for me. Up. Look oh. at the sky. Ready? One, That's it. One, two, two three. three. One out. One in. Here Clever we go. boy. There we go. And we'll, and we'll pop it on that one. On that one. Yeah. Super. 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 Well, duper. Cut them. I'm humbled by families that take children home with tracheostomies. It's a big responsibility. Um, and, you know, Vicky tends to take everything in a stride and, and just get on with it. She's very good. And if this wasn't enough, Oliver needs oxygen pumped into his tracheostomy 24 hours a day. It's quite upsetting, really, because, you know, you see all these other kids running around having a lovely time. Not that Oliver doesn't have a lovely time, but sometimes it's quite heartbreaking when you think, you know, he doesn't even understand how restricted he is, really. For trips to the hospital, they have a portable oxygen tank, but staff here are concerned that Oliver and Vicky are living with too many restrictions. His mum is very good and, and makes very light of it, but that is a 24-hour a day commitment. It's a huge amount of responsibility, just making sure that track helps be works. Hi, guys. Hello. Hi, Beth. Hi, Ollie. How are you? Hello. Mike Rotherer is a world-renowned ear, nose and throat surgeon. He fitted the tracheostomy when Oliver was six months old. Today, he has an unexpected suggestion for Vicky. There's no doubt that that lower windpipe has improved. Okay. Particularly, you know, he believes Oliver's windpipe may now be strong enough to work without the tracheostomy and the oxygen. There's only one way to know whether or not the tracheostomy is still necessary, right. and that is to get rid of the tracheostomy. Right. And he needs a voice. You know, it's really important for him to develop a voice and to develop communication. Yeah, the thought of doing it. Uh, I'm okay. so nervous. Yeah. And obviously now he's get, he's so used to it. I don't want to be taking too many steps back. I feel as yeah. I'm <laughs> pushing you now. I'm feeling nervous. Well, um, look, let's just take it one step at a time. Yeah. If that's okay with you. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. Do you not want to walk? Vicky's terrified of losing the tracheostomy that's been keeping Oliver alive, but she knows if he can manage without it, it will transform her son's life. I'm apprehensive but excited at the same time. Obviously, if it works, it's fantastic. It would be life-changing. 
Oliver could start doing things that normal kids would be doing. And to hear him speak would be phenomenal, it'd be fantastic. She's doing it. Wow. The hospital's A&E departments open 24-7 and sees nearly 800 children a week. Leading the shift today is Professor Simon Carley. He's used to seeing school injuries, but eight-year-old Yaya has done something a little out of the ordinary. What have you done? My pencil broke, mm -hmm. and then a piece, a piece of my pencil went in my thumb. It's stuck right under the nail, yeah. isn't it? And that's a bit tricky, that one, because the nail's a bit sensitive. Like, it's really sensitive. So it's quite difficult to get things out. Pencil's a nightmare because it breaks. If it's wood, you can pull, usually pull it out as a full splinter, but if it's little bits of you know, graphite, it just splinters. It can be horrible. We might end up having to lift the whole nail. I'm going to give you some giggle gas, OK? This makes you giggle. Removing the splinter is going to hurt. Can you hold it for me? Professor Carley's decided to use gas and air, along with a local anaesthetic, to minimise Yaya's pain. Sister Amy's on hand to provide some all-important distraction. So our job is to read the book. OK. OK. Not look what Simon's doing. OK. What can we see? Uh, a rock. A rock. Or oh, what can we see on this page? It seems like overkill for a splinter, but, you know, fingernails really hurt. It feels like a rock. Professor Carley's strategy seemed to be working. It feels like I've got no bones. But it doesn't hurt, does it? No. Time to remove the splinter. Down by the river crept a scarfy scar. Very good. I think you're better than me. So you can see this fluid coming out already, so Very that's already good. getting an infection. An me. infection on the nail. Clary, yeah. Again, incredibly painful. And worst case scenario is it actually gets the bone infected and you, you do some significant damage. So this is definitely the right thing to do. Then came the sound that echoed around. That. It's a yellow and black HB pencil. <laughs> and if you have a look at that now, you could hardly know we've been in there. All finished. Very brave. That's fantastic. It makes you feel pretty awful when you see things under nails, although I'm, I'm mostly toenails. I can do fingernails, I just can't do toenails. <laughs> see you later. See you later. <laughs> Three-year-old Oliver has relied on a breathing tube called a tracheostomy to keep him alive for most of his life. It means he's never been able to talk. Daddy! Spiders. Oh, no, there's a big spider in our house. In your house? Daddy caught it. Oliver's mum, Vicky, has finally given the go-ahead for a surgical investigation to see whether he could live without his tracheostomy and the supply of oxygen he receives 24 hours a day. If Ollie didn't have his tracky, the, the possibilities would be endless. Yeah, you know, we could go mainstream school, no problem. This is it. This is it. <laughs> the moment we're trying go to walk swimming nice. lessons. Oh gosh, yeah. we could take him swimming. Isn't it all? But Oliver's respiratory Ooh, problems mean he's particularly vulnerable to complications, as his nurse Carolyn Hoynes is only too aware. He's going to have a general anaesthetic. He's going to have to go to the theatre. He's well at the moment, and he could become unwell. And if this doesn't work, it could knock Oliver back here. Oliver's mum is still unsure if she's made the right decision. Sometimes I'm for it, sometimes I'm against it, because, I mean, although we're scheduled to only be in for a week, if he picks up a chest infection, who knows, we could be here for maybe a month, which is quite a daunting thing. But then on the other hand, I think, you know, if I don't try it, then we'll never know. And it's just constant toy of emotions. But ENT surgeon Mike Rotherer is convinced the procedure is the right thing to do. Personally, having known Oliver a long while, I think this is absolutely the right time to do it. Can I guarantee it's going to be successful? No, I can't. And Oliver's mum knows that's the case. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Very much. Thank you. The investigation will reveal whether Oliver's windpipe is strong enough to work on its own without the tracheostomy. If you have the stacker system and the camera, that'd be great. Mr Rotherer uses a tiny camera to get a good look. You can see the tracheostomy there. That looks great. That's sitting down beautifully in his trachea, which looks fantastic. The good news is Oliver's windpipe has grown much stronger. 
The bad news is there's a large growth blocking his upper airway. Swelling there just above the tracheostomy. It's sort of scar tissue and just sort of chronic irritation. If Oliver's ever going to have a chance of breathing freely, the growth is going to have to be removed. Let's have a size four endotracheal tube. Scissors, please. And that's the swelling that was sitting on the inside, which is now removed. Oliver will need 24 hours to recover, but with a clear and strong windpipe, he's one step closer to living without his tracheostomy. Coming up, Caitlin's earring's gone astray. Oh! And will Oliver manage to breathe on his own and leave his tracheostomy behind? Eyes closed for a minute. A&E staff at Royal Manchester Children's Hospital treat around 30 fractures a month. Nine-year-old Ali's just arrived. He thinks he's broken his arm. This will be the third time he's done it in this year, so Dad's not happy. I hope it's going to be the last one, son. Yeah? You're going to behave after that. Okay. So, yeah, yeah. No. Dad's banned Ali from playing sports while his arm heals from the previous break, but Ali's struggling to stick to the rules. Yes. Yeah. And when you fell, how did you bang your arm? Well, um, I was playing tag rugby and then I tripped over one of my friends. Can you tell me if it hurts when we press? A bit. OK, and up there. Ow. And he's had a pin in this arm? Yeah, because he broke his arm a day before his birthday. Oh, dear. Yeah. An initial assessment is carried out by triage nurse Claire, but it's up to Professor Kevin Mackway jones who's been a consultant of emergency medicine for 17 years, to decide how to treat Ali's injury. But it sort of touches it. Yeah. Yeah, OK. The yeah. thing is, it's a complicated case mm -hmm. because he had a really nasty fracture before. Before. So this is a fracture, if it is a fracture, of an old fracture. But what we can do is it's clearly sore for him. We'll stop it being sore. We'll put it into um, a, just a, a plaster just to support it and we'll send him along to Fracture Clinic just so they can have a look at it. I advised him really to avoid football, rugby, it was intense, he's but he boy. doesn't listen. I think Quiet. while it's sore, he's going to have to be careful, mm -hmm. otherwise he'll fall over and hurt it. Have you done that recently, like in the last day? Mm. Oh, yes. Many times, <laughs> yeah. All right. Ali's arm is badly bent, so A&E nurses secure it with a plaster cast. He'll return in a few days' time to see one of the hospital's bone specialists. This is not the whole one. In the meantime, Ali and his dad make a deal. What did you learn today? Behave. Behave. Don't play football, because it's not healed yet. So you will honour your promise? Yes. 100%? 100%. Gentleman agreement? Yes. Okay. Give me a minute, run away your lights. Yeah. Bye-bye. Thank you. As soon as I see the doctors, we will go and play helicopter all around. Three-year-old Oliver was born with a rare form of dwarfism and chronic breathing problems. For most of his life, he's lived with a tube fitted directly into his windpipe to help him breathe. The tracheostomy means he's never been able to use his voice. Did the aeroplane go over our house? OK, young man. When I looked down yesterday, everything looked great. And I'm going to see if we can just get you breathing normally again. An examination has shown that Oliver's windpipe is now strong enough to work on its own. But before his tracheostomy can be removed, surgeon Mike Rothera blocks it to see if Oliver can breathe through his nose. Pop your head back. It's ready. just a temporary blockage using a, a piece of sticking plaster. Lovely. Feels really strange, OK, Oliver, because you've not done this for a long, long, long time. You're a clever boy, aren't you? You're what? doing beautifully. We've just got to make sure that he's able to breathe and get enough yeah. air and oxygen into his lungs yeah. and that he can cope with that. And yeah. so there's a, the next 24, 48 hours going to be difficult enough just with that. I think he's just trying to suss out what's going on, to be honest. Are you being cheeky and still breathing through that tracking? You're supposed to be breathing from up here, aren't you? Hey. Yeah, I think it's going to take some getting used to from all parts, for me, especially Ollie, obviously. 
He's the one going through it, and we're just the ones, I suppose, helping him through. If Oliver manages to breathe on his own for 24 hours, the tracheostomy will be removed, giving him a chance to use his voice for the first time. The following morning, Oliver is still breathing successfully through his nose. Are you going to take this tracheo? It means the moment everybody's been waiting for has finally arrived. I do not want to. Oh. Consultant surgeon Ian Bruce is about to remove the tracheostomy. If it works, it means Oliver will be able to breathe unassisted for the first time in two and a half years. Eyes closed for a minute. OK, right. When we take it out, I'm quite happy for you to pick him up and give him a big cuddle. Yep. What a good boy. One, two, three. Good job. I think your mummy needs to give you a big cuddle, doesn't she? You got a love? Yes. yes. Oh, such a brave boy. Okay, give him a cuddle. You can see already, I think he's going to do absolutely fine. Hey. But, um, OK, you see you later. Much. Take Thank care. You. Bye bye. Guess what, Ollie? You've got no tracking and we've got no oxygen. How good's that? Literally speechless, although I am talking. Speechless. I, I, I am blown away. I didn't think it would ever come out. Oh. And just when Mum thinks her day couldn't get any better... Hey, Mummy. With your voice. Mummy. <laughs> you cheeky monkey. Oliver's speech isn't quite there, but it shouldn't be too long before he starts to find his voice. It's the grass green. Yeah. It'd be kind of like having, a, you know, a baby with their first words. Uh, although Ollie can sign, um, having him speak and learning to speak will be a fantastic new journey. <laughs> In accident and emergency, Sister Annette Whittle has plenty of experience calming injured children. Five-year-old Caitlin's got the back of an earring embedded in her earlobe. I do want the earring to fall out, so I'll push it in too much. It's quite common with children of this age, to be quite honest. Um, especially if they're allowed to wear them for school, um, parents just leave them in and forget about them, really. And it's only when they start to get sore that they start to realise that they're probably there. Hiya. Have a little look at your ear. It's consultant Rachel Jenner's job to try to take Caitlin's earring out. Right, um, is, is the front part of the earring there, or have you taken the front part of the earring out? I've took it out. OK. What we're going to do is we're going to get some, some special laughing gas for you to breathe. OK, and that'll stop it from hurting. And then we can take the earring out. OK. Yes. Caitlin's being given gas and air, or Entinox, to numb the pain, but she'll need to take deeper breaths if it's going to work. Can you do ten big deep breaths for me? Ready? OK. Oh. One. <laughs> two. No, Caitlin. Watch the nurse. Watch the nurse. You don't want to do it, OK. <laughs> Caitlin's having none of it. Time for plan B. We're going to change the attachment so that um, Caitlin doesn't have to worry about breathing in and out. She's just at the age where she's probably not old enough to concentrate on the breathing. Right, you're ready now. You don't have to do anything this time. You just wear a bit this. more drowsy. Good girl. Local anaesthetic, it can be difficult to actually get, get the ear numb, um, but Entonox is great because um, it takes the pain away and um, we can just take, take it out very quickly. Oh, it's sticking in your eye. <laughs> That's a bit silly. You won't be able to see what we're doing, will you? <laughs> the gas and air is now doing its job. Time to remove that earring. Oh, OK, we've done it. <laughs> well done, what a good girl. Let's pop okay. it in there and then you can keep it, can't you, and take it back. <laughs> I just got away so I don't get dizzy. That's, That's right. right. You were fantastic. Well, that hurt. But I'm OK. In a few minutes, Caitlin will be ready to leave, but it'll be several days before she can wear earrings again. Fly your bat all the way to the fish. Oh, you're hiding it, you're going to surprise the fish. Two days ago, three-year-old Oliver was weaned off his oxygen for the first time. Until then, he'd spent his life permanently hooked up to an oxygen tank. Now, free at last, Oliver can venture wherever he chooses. Wow! 
Oh, wow, look, I could see one too. It feels like he's just a new boy. It really does, it's weird. He understands it fully, I think. For him, it's a complete new lease of life. With the breathing tube that was fitted to his windpipe now gone, Oliver's beginning to find his voice, but it's still early days. Oh, oh, look at that, too. One, two. <laughs> Carolyn Hoynes, the nurse who's cared for Oliver since he was born, has come to see how he's doing. Ali, where's your tracker gone? Where's he you put your tracker? Did you put it in the bin? Yeah. And you feel all right? I'm quite surprised that he's not needed the oxygen. But he's proved us wrong at the moment, so uh, just hope it keeps going. I know. Doing great. I'm blown away. Very good. Oliver's going to have a go at saying something to Carolyn. Bye. Shout it. Shout. Shout bye to Carolyn. Can you shout loud. <laughs> shout bye. bye with your voice. Bye. 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 Clever bye. Clever Clever kisses. Boy. See you in a bit. It's going to be amazing for him to have his own independence. You know, not relying on me so much, I don't know what I'm going to do with my time. <laughs> I'm quite sure by the time we get home, it won't be long before we realise he's just how much freedom he's got. Yeah, there'd be no stopping him, I reckon. Oliver's making fantastic progress. He's now breathing on his own, and with the help of a speech therapist and plenty of practice, it won't be too long before he can speak to whoever he pleases. Oh no, he's sat on his head. <laughs>